Chapter One. The Game Park. Susan, are you ready? Coming, love. Hey, David. What's up? We're going on a picture safari to the Hluluwe Reserve. George is going to be our guide. Ah, the Hluluwe Umfalosi Park. It's the park of the Big Five: rhinos, elephants, leopards, lions, and buffalo. It's wonderful. How long are you staying? Not long, just for the weekend. We're sleeping in tents. Okay, sit in the back with the baby. I'll drive. And I'll sit in the front next to you, David. Bye. Have a nice time, and don't forget to take pictures. See you on Monday. Bye. Bye. How far is it from here? It's about a hundred miles on the freeway. When we get to the Umfalosi River, there's a road sign indicating the game reserve. Three hours later, here we are. That's the main entrance, I think. There's an emergency number two, three, three, three. I'll drive now. The road is dangerous inside the park. Not yet, George. I can manage. Wow! Look at that leopard. Look, darling, a mummy elephant with its baby. Mummy elephant. Baby. I want to take a picture of those rhinos. And there's a lion down there. We can't stop here, David. It's dangerous. Hold the steering wheel while I. No, David. Wait. Watch out. There's a hole in the road. No. Ouch! No, David! Help! Chapter Two: The Car Crash. Two hours later. Mommy. Mommy sleeping. <sighs> Mommy elephant, baby elephant. Late in the afternoon. Where am I? What am I doing here? Oh my God! Help! I must call for help. A mobile phone. Emergency number three three three. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Please help me. There are two people in a jeep here. They hurt very badly. Please, please. Where are you exactly? I don't know. Please, please. There they are. Let's land there. The Durban Gazette, Sunday, March 18, 1988. Two killed in a car crash inside Umfalosi Park. Child disappeared. English researcher David Miller and South African George Wachira died yesterday in a car crash inside the Umfalosi Game Reserve. The police are looking for Mr. Miller's two-year-old son, Danny, who was in the jeep with the two men and Mr. Miller's wife, Susan McKinley. But there is little hope of finding him alive. The woman also seems to have disappeared. She was questioned by the police yesterday afternoon, but remembered very little about the accident. Police believe that she has lost her memory. Chapter Three. Found. The Durban Gazette, Monday, March nineteen. 1988, missing child babysat by female elephant found alive. Danny Miller, the missing son of the man killed in a car crash on Saturday, has been found by the Umfalosi Reserve guards. To the guards' astonishment, the child was safe and sound. 
it seems that a female elephant looked after him after the accident. Danny's mother, Susan McKinley, is still reported missing. Danny Miller with reserve guard John Wantua. In the background, Haila, the mother elephant who saved the child. Danny and his parents, David and Susan, when they were a happy family. Danny Miller, the two-year-old boy who was found alive in the bush last Sunday, has been assigned to the local social services department. Mrs. Robina Ork, who is in charge of the case, is with us tonight. Good evening, Robina. Good evening. What can you tell us about this case? Where is Danny now? Well, he's at Durban Orphanage at the moment. Hasn't Danny got any relatives? Well, he's got an old grandfather in London. That's Danny's father's father. But he's ill and can't take care of the boy, of course. And there are no relatives on the mother's side. Susan McKinley was an orphan herself. She was born in Scotland, but moved to London when she was 19. She married David Miller three years ago in London, and after that, the couple moved to South Africa. Meanwhile, at Johannesburg International Airport... Can I have your ticket and your passport, please? Yes, here you are. All right. Any luggage? No, just hand baggage. Have a nice trip, Mrs McKinley. Thank you. On the plane. Welcome, Welcome on board British Airways flight BZ573 to London Heathrow. Three hours later. Danny, David, no, no! Are you all right, madam? Oh, yes, uh, I'm sorry. It was just a bad dream. Can I have a glass of water, please? Excuse me, have we met before? Your face looks familiar. I'm from Natal. Natal? No, sorry, I've never been to Natal. I'm from Scotland, actually. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We're beginning our descent to London Heathrow. In London, the weather is fine, sunny and a bit windy, and the temperature is about 12 degrees centigrade. The local time is a quarter to three. I hope you have enjoyed your trip. Thank you for traveling British Airways. Chapter Four School is over. Sixteen years later. Let me congratulate this year's students for their matric results. Most of you have passed the exams and a few students have obtained excellent marks. The following students have obtained a scholarship. They have the opportunity to attend a university in Britain. Shania Mutawa. Congratulations, Shania. You're the best student in our school. Shania is going to Norwich University. And let me just say a few words about this student. You all know Samuel Msibi. Samuel has been a brilliant student for many years and a sports champion too. His teachers are proud of him and we all know that life hasn't been easy for Samuel. Samuel is going to Norwich University with Shania. He's going to do a degree in social studies. Congratulations, Samuel. We wish you all the best for the future. Thank you. Wow, school's over at last. Have you got any plans for your holidays? Well, Morgan might do is joining the Buffalo Breeding Project. You know they're trying to repopulate the buffalo in the Llhuwe Umfalosi Park. I think I'll go with him. Oh, OK then. Have a nice time. Don't forget, we have something in common. Our plane tickets to Britain. I won't forget, I promise. Hi, Dad. Hi, Samuel. How did it go? Great. Here are my matric results. Let's go inside. Your mother's waiting for you. I'm proud of you, son. Let's have a piece of cake.
Chapter 5 A New Life Some months later, in Norwich... I like chemistry too, but biology is my favourite subject. Hey, look! There's Tracy! Hi, Tracy! You weren't at the sociology class this morning. Uh, no. I was busy working at a fundraising event. A what? Don't you have any fundraising events in your country? Uh, well, no. I don't think so. What are they? Well, it's a way of raising money. I'm working for a charity. Oh, I understand now. Charities are organisations which help poor people. Well, not only poor people. People who are sick or in need. And what about this fundraising event? We're going on a bike ride in the Hebrides. You know, the islands north of Scotland. We're cycling all around the islands and going up to Tarensai. Look, I've got a map here. Wow. Can anybody take part? Yes, of course, provided you can cycle. Hey, why don't you two come? It's at the end of June when we finish classes at the university. Well, thanks, but I'm no good at cycling. You can go, Samuel. You know, Tracy, Samuel was a cycling champion at school. Great. We need people like you, Samuel. By the way, who are you raising money for? War orphans. Oh, orphans. I see. Well, I've got to go now. I'm in a hurry. Bye. Hey, Shania, what's the matter with Samuel? I didn't know he was moody. Uh, well, it's not a question of being moody. Samuel's an orphan himself. He lost both his parents in a car crash when he was a baby, or so it seems. Oh, I see. Chapter 6 Getting ready for the trip. Dear Mum and Dad, As I told you in my last email, tomorrow I'm leaving for the Outer Hebrides. We're going to Inverness by train, and then we'll start our bike ride from the island of Lewis. We aim to land on islands like Terransay, St Kilda and Scarp, which the ferry can't get to. Our transport will be a marine research vessel. I'm really looking forward to seeing these wild and remote places. It'll be a wonderful experience. You both know how important it is for me to do something for children who haven't been as lucky as me. We've found a few well-known sponsors for this event, an English company that produces organic food, a famous chain of supermarkets, and a publisher of children's books. This means we're going to raise quite a lot of money. I'll try to get in touch with you by phone, because I don't think I'll find many internet cafes on the islands. I'm waiting for Shania, She's got a new boyfriend, a boy from Norwich, who is studying to become a journalist. She seems very happy, and I'm really pleased for her. Hugs and kisses to both of you. Samuel. Coming! Hi, Shania. Hi, Sam. How's life? Well, I'm a bit excited. Hey, what a mess. Haven't you finished packing yet? Well, I was waiting for you. I thought you could give me a hand. I knew it. OK, let's see. What goes in the backpack? Two pairs of pants, two sweaters, a pair of sport shoes, some T-shirts and some underwear. Oh, you were writing an email? Yes, to Mum and Dad. They were a bit worried. And the strange thing is that I had a dream last night. I was on one of the islands and I felt as if I'd lived there for a long time. It was really weird. Oh, come on, Sam. It was just a dream. Chapter 7 The Dream It's the sixth day of the trip. The group is now on the boat that will take them to the last island of their tour, Taranse. So what do you think of this experience? We've been here for nearly a week now. It's great. I can do what I like doing best. Cycling, I mean. And at the same time, I'm helping people. It's fantastic, isn't it? And I've made a lot of new friends. I heard you scream last night. 
Did I? I had a nightmare. Oh. What's it about? I was alone, on a sailing boat, during a terrible storm. The sky was full of black clouds, and it was very windy, and the waves were huge. Suddenly, I fell into the water, and I grabbed onto a piece of wood. And then I started swimming. I swam and I swam, until I saw some rocks. The sea was still very rough. If I'd tried to reach the shore, I would have crashed into the rocks. I was exhausted, and I was about to drown. Suddenly, somebody appeared on a rock. It was a strange figure, wearing a long robe with a hood. I couldn't say whether it was a man or a woman. I held out my hands for help. If only that person had in turn held out his or hers, I would have been saved. But that didn't happen. The figure didn't move a finger. It remained motionless, and I drowned. Oh, Sam, what an awful dream. I'm sure it means something. Hey, you two, stop flirting. It's briefing time. Everybody on the front deck. In a few minutes, we'll be landing on Tarantai. It's the remotest of the Outer Hebrides. Once the island was populated, but now only a few people live here. We'll be staying there for three days. Oh, gosh. What's the matter? They look like the rocks in my dream. Come on, Sam. It was only a dream. Chapter 8 A Dangerous Ride Is the island inhabited? Well, there's a B&B &B on the other side of the island, but it's open only for the summer season. The owner is a woman. I wonder how she can live there alone during the winter. Alone? Yes, people say she's a bit strange. She's tough anyway. Look, there she is. She's probably been shopping in Harris. What's the B&B &B called? I'm not sure. The reserve, I think. Come on, Sam. Let's get a move on. Later, at the camp. Where are you going? You're not supposed to leave the group. Come on, Tracy. I just want to have a look around. Are you coming? OK. Wow, the view is great. Hey, what are those animals in the sea? They must be seals. Let's get nearer. OK, but be careful, it's very steep. Oh! Ouch! Are you all right, Tracy? Yes. No. It's my ankle. I think I've sprained it. Oh, no. It's bleeding. Yes, it's a bad cut. I'll use my hanky to stop the blood, but you'll need to disinfect the wound. I'll go and look for help. Oh, Sam, don't leave me alone. It's going to rain. You can take shelter under the rock. I won't be long. The campsite's too far, but there should be a B&B &B around here. That must be the place the sailor told me about. Excuse me? Is anybody in? Yes. Chapter 9. Echoes from the Past. Hey, are you all right? You look as if you've seen a ghost. Uh, sorry to bother you. It's my friend. She needs help. OK. Come in, it's raining hard. So, what's the matter with your friend? She fell off her bike and hurt her ankle. She's on the path, up there. I'll get the first aid box. Why don't you take your shirt off? You're wet through. Oh, that birthmark. Madam, are you OK? Yes, yes. Quickly, let's get into the jeep. That poor girl must be waiting for us.
Hello, don't worry. Let's see your ankle. Oh, by the way, my name's Susan. I'm Samuel. Sam for friends. And this is Tracy. Hi. You're lucky. The cut isn't serious and your ankle isn't broken. Tomorrow you'll be all right, but you won't be able to ride or walk very well for a few days. What you need now is a nice cup of tea and some dry clothes. Samuel, put Tracy's bike into the jeep and help me with her. OK. Thanks, but we've got to go back to the campsite. Everyone will be worried. I think I can manage. No, you can't. Anyway, can't you phone? I'll drive you to the campsite later. Tracy, Susan is right. We can get in touch with Mark. I've got his mobile number. Later at Susan's. And so you live here alone? I'm not alone, actually. I've got three dogs, ten sheep and loads of other animals to keep me company. Were you born on the island? No, I came here a long time ago. More than ten years ago. This place is called the Reserve, isn't it? It's a bit unusual. Unusual? Why did you decide to move here? Why? Oh, it's a long story. Well, I think I'd better drive you back to the camp, or they'll think you've been kidnapped. Chapter 10 A Nightmare Speaks the Truth Late that night... Stop! The gazelle! Watch out! The lion's going to kill it! Hello? John, is that you? <sighs> Sorry to wake you up, but you know that dream? The one with the gazelle being killed by the lion? I've just had it again. And that heart-shaped birthmark. OK, Susie, calm down. I told you that your past would come back sooner or later. Try to relax now. Take one of the pills I gave you and come to my surgery tomorrow afternoon. Thank you. I feel so bad. And this time it's going to be even worse. Do you want me to come round to your place? No. I'm OK. Don't worry. I'll go for a walk along the shore. That'll help me. Diggy, come here. Hello? Ah! Who are you? It's me, Samuel. I came to your house yesterday morning with the girl who hurt her ankle, remember? Oh, yes, Samuel. For a moment I thought you were a ghost. What are you doing here? I couldn't sleep, so I decided to go for a walk. How funny. I couldn't sleep either. Look at Diggy. He isn't always so friendly with strangers. Yesterday you said you were from South Africa. Where exactly? Natal. Durban, to be precise. Ah, oh, Durban. I see. Do your parents live there? Yes, they do. Well, they're not my real parents, actually. I was adopted when I was a baby. My parents died in a car crash and I didn't have any relatives. What is he doing here with that woman? Hey, Susan, what's the matter? Nothing. Don't worry, I'm all right. I've got to go now. Bye. Chapter 11 Susan's memory comes back. The next day at Harris Hospital, Hello, Susan. Are you feeling better? I don't know. I feel a bit queer. Dizzy. It's that boy, Samuel. And that birthmark on his shoulder. OK, Susan. Lie down and close your eyes. Breathe slowly and concentrate on the heart-shaped birthmark. Does it remind you of something? There's a jeep with some people in it. Are you in Scotland? No. 
It can't be Scotland. The land is dry and the sky is incredibly blue. It looks like Africa. Can you see the people in the jeep? Two black men and a woman. A white woman and a child. Is it a boy or a girl? It's a boy. And, oh my God, that birthmark. Is it heart-shaped? No, no, there's a car crash. Everyone's going to die. Oh, the woman in the Jeep. It's me, it's me. Susan, calm down. Nancy, quickly, a tranquilizer. A couple of hours later. That's the whole story. Can you do anything for me, Tony? The first thing I can do is ask the police there if Susan's name is in any police files in Durban. I'll call you back as soon as I know something. Thank you. Bye, mate. Some time later, in Detective McNichol's office... File date 1988. Susan McKinley reported missing after death of husband in car crash in Unfalosi Reserve. A two-years-old child survived, temporarily cared for by the local social services. Later adopted by John and Rosium CB in 1989. Hmm. Very interesting. Chapter 12 Back to the Past Susan, I think I've found out something about your past. Would you like to listen to the whole story? Go on, John. I'm ready now. Fifteen years ago, you used to live in South Africa, in Durban. You were married to a sociologist from London and had a child. A child? Yes. He was two years old in 1988, and he had a heart-shaped birthmark on his right shoulder. You mean Samuel... Look, this is an article from the local newspaper. Oh, Danny. You thought that Danny had died in the accident, and the shock made you lose your memory. Susan, there's a surprise for you. Come in. Samuel! Danny! Susan! Mum! Everything's so incredible! <laughs> Calm down, Susan. It's all over now. A couple of weeks later... How long are you staying in Natal? Four weeks. I want to see the places I used to live in and meet Sam's parents, of course. And I'd like to go sightseeing in your beautiful country. Come on, Tracy. A month isn't that long. But promise me that you'll email me every day. You know I'm going to miss you a lot. I'll miss you too. Last call for passengers flight BASA693 to Durban, boarding at gate 23. Bye! Have a nice flight. Bye! Have you called your parents to tell them that the plane is delayed? Yes, just before boarding. Don't worry, Susan. Have you switched your mobile off? Come on, Susan, relax. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs>